You know, we've come a long way with television since I was a kid. We have a television now that I think's got about 1,500 different channels on it. I remember the day when you had three channels with rabbit ears. If you got the rabbit ears in the right position, you could even get a picture. And I remember turning on the TV many times and watching the test pattern come up. I thought the test pattern was so amazing. And you could actually get pictures of people on a little old TV screen. We've come a long way, baby. Now you've got streaming services. You can get every kind of picture, anything. You know, one of the streaming services we have on our TV is called American Pure Flix. If you don't have American Pure Flix, you ought to get it. One of the best streaming services, I believe, that's on TV. It's all Christian movies. And the, the Lord dealt with me early in the week this week about what to preach this morning. And as most of you know, I'm one of those preachers that tries to look for confirmation if I've heard the Lord right and got the right message that the Lord wants me to preach. And we were watching a movie that was based basically on a group of ladies that were doing a fundraiser for an abused uh, women's shelter. And the way they were doing this, they bought this old restaurant and turned it into a bakery and baked cupcakes. And on those cupcakes, on every cupcake, they had a little toothpick with a flag on it that had a scripture verse. And uh, they sold these cupcakes as a fundraiser uh, for this women's shelter. And uh, they didn't show many of the uh, scripture verses uh, that were on the cupcakes. But as I was watching, all of a sudden they showed this up close picture of a cupcake and the little flag on the toothpick said, Jeremiah 29 11. And I said, thank you, Lord. Jeremiah 29 11. Please turn there in your Bible, if you would, please. Jeremiah 29 11, a very familiar First of Scripture, very familiar passage to many people. It's been used many times by many people in many various ways uh, to get a message across. But in uh, Jeremiah chapter 29, beginning at verse 11, we find these words. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And you shall seek me and find me when you search, search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place where I caused you to be carried away captive. Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Now, as most of you know, I don't stray from the authorized King James Version very much in my preaching. But I love the Living Bible translation of this verse. Let me read to you the Living Bible translation of this verse. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. To give you a future and a hope. I've asked you many, many times before, what would we do if it weren't for hope? If we had no hope in the Lord, what would we do so many times in our lives? Our whole Christianity is based so many times on hope in the Lord. If we don't have hope in the Lord, what, what do you have hope in? You can't hope in this world. This world and all that we know is going to pass away. The only eternal hope that you can have is in the Lord. And He gives us an eternal hope if we'll trust in Him. If you need a title for the message, the title is simply, The Desire to Find God. 
the desire to find God. You know, many, many people in the world do not realize it. <coughs> But in the end result, what they're actually searching for as they search through life, what they're actually searching for, whether they realize it or not, is God. Amen. Because God is the creator and sustainer of all things. And, and there's a search going on in the hearts of all people across the world today. And many of them do not realize it. But what their heart is yearning for and what they're really searching for is to find God and find some purpose and meaning in their life. So we're going to talk about the desire to find God. And it begins with Him. It begins with Him. Look again at verse 11. I know the thoughts that I think toward you. It begins with God thinking about you. How many of you ever stopped to realize that God thinks about you a lot? In fact, the Bible talks at one point about He thinks about us more than the sands of the sea. God is always thinking about us. You say, well, there's billions of people in the world. How can God be thinking of all of us at the same time. You know how He can do that? Because He's God. God can do anything He wills and chooses to do just because He's God. And God chooses to think of you and me more than the sands that are numbered on the seashore. Isn't that amazing? So, so the desire to find God begins with Him. First, He's thinking about you, and then notice He is there to hear. He, he, said, he, he said, Then ye shall call upon Me, and ye shall go and pray unto Me, and I will hearken unto you. I will hearken unto you. That means God hears us when we pray. God wants us to have communion with Him. Now, when we gather together every fifth Sunday and take the Lord's Supper, if you've ever noticed, I never call the Lord's Supper communion. Now, there's nothing particularly wrong, I guess, with calling that, but communion is not literally the partaking of the Lord's Supper. Communion is communing with God Almighty one to one. You commune with God through prayer. You commune with God by talking to Him just like you talk to a dear friend, just like you talk to your husband or your wife, just like you talk to other people. You just talk to God. You commune with Him. Why? Because He's thinking about you and He wants to hear from you. He desires to hear from His children. It begins with him thinking about you, and it begins with his, with his being there to hear you when you call upon him. The desire to find God begins with him. But secondly, it depends upon your prayers. It depends upon your prayers. Verse 12. Then ye shall call upon me. Now, if you're not doing that, shame, shame, double shame on you. <laughs> Why? Because God desires, God wants tremendously for you and for me to call upon Him. God wants to fellowship with you. God wants to fellowship with me. I, I've admitted this to you many times before. For years, I had a distinct spiritual failure in my life, even as a pastor. I didn't have a specific time set aside in the day where I met every day with the Lord and got in His Word and read His Word and had a specific prayer list and prayed through my prayer list. I have done that for the last several years, and it has literally changed my life. God wants us to have a time with Him daily. If you don't have a time set aside in your schedule to meet with the Lord every single day of your life, I encourage you as strongly as I can to set aside some day, some time in your day 
to get alone with the Lord. Get in His Word and pray. Go through a prayer list. I have the church prayer list. I have a personal prayer list. There are many people, when people come up to you and say, will you pray about that? Will you pray with me? And you say, yes. Let me ask you a question. Do you do it? Or you just say, yes, I will, and go about your business. It's important that we keep our commitments to pray for those who request that we pray for them and remember them to God. It depends on your prayers. He said, ye shall, see, ye shall call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me and listen. Again, he's there to hear. He said, I will hearken unto you. He's there to hear when you and I pray. So pray expecting God to hear and expecting God to do what you ask Him to do. If we don't pray with expectation, question, why pray? If we don't pray expecting God to hear and answer our prayers, prayer is just a useless time waster. But if we pray believing, knowing beyond any shadow of a doubt that God is hearing and answering our prayers, it makes all the difference in the world. The desire to find God begins with Him. And it depends on your prayers. But thirdly, it involves a personal search. It involves a personal search. This is just between you and Him. Just between you and God. Listen to verse 13. Ye shall seek me and find me. We're talking about the desire to find God. He said, ye shall seek me and find me. When? When? What's the answer to that? When? When ye shall search for me with all your heart. You've got to put your heart into it. You've got to put your mind, your soul, your strength, your whole being into fellowship with God and getting alone with God and just with you and Him, having a divine conversation, seeking Him with all of your heart, with all of your strength, with all of your soul, with all of your might. That's the first commandment in God's Word, that we seek Him with everything that we have, with everything that we are. Ye shall seek me and find me. When? When ye shall seek, search for me with all of your heart. It involves a personal search. And then when we come to the result of the desire to find God, and we do find Him, we find, fourthly, that when found, God always makes a difference. When He's found, God always, without fail, makes a difference. Listen to the Scripture, verse 14. I will be found of you, saith the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity. When found, God alone makes a difference. I will be found of you. I will turn away your captivity. Have you ever felt like you were held captive by something or someone in your life? That you weren't really free? That you weren't experiencing total freedom in the Lord? That you felt like something was holding you back? That something was holding you captive from being all that you desire to be, from doing all that you wanted to do for the Lord, but just something seemed to be holding you back. It's like you were being held captive by something or someone. God wants to free you and me from that captivity. But it only happens when we seek for Him with all of our heart. When we find Him, and Him alone is the answer to our prayers and to our needs. No one outside of the Lord can answer the needs of our hearts and lives 
Only God can do that. The desire to find God begins with Him. Begins with Him thinking about you. Begins with Him being there to hear. The desire to find God depends upon your prayers. When you seek Him with all of your heart, then when you find Him, it involves a personal search. You search for Him with everything that you have. It has to be personal between you and God. And then when He's found, God always makes a difference. You'll never be the same once you encounter God on a regular basis. You'll never, ever be the same again. God will change you into a different person than you used to be. In biblical terms, it's called being born again. You're a brand new species, one that's never been before. Why? Because you had a divine encounter with a divine God. And when you have a divine encounter with a divine God, you are never, never, ever the same again. The desire to find God begins with Him, depends on your prayers, involves a personal search. When found, God alone makes the difference. And fifth and finally, finding God means coming home to freedom. Finding God means coming home to freedom. Listen to verse 14. I will be found of you, saith the Lord. I will turn again your captivity. If you're no longer captive, what are you? Free. If you're not a captive, you've found freedom. You're free. I will gather you from all the nations, from all the places where I've driven you, saith the Lord. And listen, I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. In other words, he's bringing you back to the place of freedom. Let me ask you a personal question. Do you have freedom with the Lord today? As far as you know, are things on the right basis between you and God? Are you walking with Him? Are you listening to Him? Are you talking with Him daily? Are you listening to Him? Are you doing the best you know how to be led by the Spirit of God and do what the Spirit prompts you to do in your daily walk? The question is, if not, why not? If we're not doing that as Christians, and I don't say it harshly, I say it lovingly. If we're not doing that as Christians, we're just playing church. We're just coming together and singing some songs and hearing a sermon and going about our merry way. But if we're really seeking and finding the Lord in our lives, moment by moment, day by day, being led by the Spirit of God, we're going to be different people that are going to make a difference in this ungodly world. Do you think you and I are making the difference that we could be making in this world? I'll admit many times I know I'm not, but I desire to. I desire to make a difference in other people's lives. I desire to let God use me to bring other people to Christ. There are many of my friends right now that I golf with have, have for years and years, day in and day, week in and week out, that I've been praying for for years. And I've shared with several of them in a personal way. But some of them I haven't had the chance yet to just share personally, one-on-one. -on -one. But I'm asking God to let me do that. I want to see all those guys come to Jesus. I don't want to see any of my friends go to hell. I want to spend eternity in heaven with all of my friends. My friends that are not saved yet. I want God to use me as a vessel of His to help bring those guys to Jesus. 
that we might spend eternity in heaven together. Do you have friends like that? Do you have family members like that? What are we doing? What are we doing to see to the best of our ability that they come to know Christ? If we're going to be that kind of person, first of all, we've got to seek and find God for ourselves. We've got to get rid of that captivity that's held us back from saying and doing and being all that God would have us to say, be, and do. We need to get on our knees and get on our faces sometimes before God and beg Him to set us free from the captivity that may be holding us back so that we can be free to share Jesus with a lost and dying world. Amen? Let's stand together.